everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Julio, and this... What? Your name is Julio? <laughs> wait, wait, my name's not Julio. My name's Victoria. <laughs> Let's try that again. Yeah. Everybody, my name is Victoria. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a special guest with me, my husband Julio. And Julio recently had a very big accomplishment, perhaps the biggest, the second biggest in his life, aside the from second biggest? aside from marrying me. Mm. He the, finished an accomplishment. <laughs> he fi yeah, this is that your... she finally said yes was an accomplishment. <laughs> This How is... many times did I ask you? Can we get back to the subject, please? Sure, why not? <laughs> he finally finished Well of Ascension. This is a really big day for him. We are going to talk to him about it. Would you like to hold the beloved book? Yeah, it's not a good cover. <laughs> so it took Julio a few months to read this book because um, he had a different kind of experience with it rather than with Mistborn. Mm -hmm. Like Miss Bourne, he flew through a little bit more. So we're going to talk about his experience with Well of Ascension and figure out if Julio is going to be continuing with the series, mm. which I hope he does. We'll find out. So let's go ahead and just jump into our questions today. He is in the hot seat. You ready? Sure. All right. Well, let's first describe your overall impressions of the second book compared to the first book. Um, how was the overall experience for you? The overall experience. Um, spoiler free. So we're going to talk spoiler oh, okay. free. Spoiler for a free. While. Spoiler free. I'll just put it up here. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it was well written. I, I do like Brandon Sanderson's writing, uh, and I continue to enjoy the things that he does. Uh, I like that he. That you get a different perspective from different characters in the stories. Uh, I particularly liked the um, going deeper into what certain characters think in this book. Um, spoiler free, maybe later with spoilers I'll say why and what particular occurrences in the book that I liked. Um, but yeah, I like the writing. It's really well done. It's an enjoyable read. Uh, even through the parts that don't move a whole lot. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, it's, it's not like a, it's not a chore to read through Brandon Sanderson's writing. Um, but it does take some time. So you like his style, his I do. prose? I perhaps? enjoy his style. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy how he writes. I like the complexity of, um, of the stories. He, he it's very expansive. Uh, like his worlds are amazing. So yeah, everything that he writes, um, it, it was enjoyed by by me. <laughs> Did you have any favorite events in the book or any events that shocked you? Now we are going to get into spoilers. So spoilers. That is the end of the spoiler-free <laughs> section. <laughs> that was it. All right, goodbye, it was books. A very, it was a very short <laughs> Keep spoiler. Keep reading great books. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very short spoiler-free section because it is the middle book of a series, so mm -hmm. there's only so much you can say. Yeah. So if you haven't read Well of Ascension... Goodbye. Thank you for saying hello. Um, so, spoilers, starting now. Did you have any favorite events in the book or anything that shocked you? Oh, yes, lots. Um, favorite events. Uh, there's a huge event that happens at the end when you realize Vin, throughout the entire book, has been looking for um, who the imposter is. So, they're under a siege. There are a few armies at the doorstep of Luthadel. And Vin is trying to find out uh, which Chandra has uh, Im infiltrated their inner circle. And the reveal was amazing. Um, which actually leads me to have really enjoyed the character of Ten Soon. And you discover that it's not Or Sir. So huge shock. And it kind of makes sense. Um, but... You you never expected, so it was such a, an amazing reveal. I never once, as the reader, did I think, "Oh, it's probably the Chandra." Uh, that didn't cross my mind at all. Actually, I thought I was actually going with the reasoning that Vin was going through in her head, which was it was probably someone that was close, but not in the interview. So that was one of my favorite experiences, finding out who the imposter was. Also. 
finding out this relationship after you um you know who the imposter is the relationship that vin built with tensoon was a great uh revelation too yeah. because she was able to change the way that that Condra thought about humanity and he even put his contract on the line even maybe slightly it could have been interpreted that way but he did risk his life for for her and risk his contract to save Vin. Mm -hmm. So there were some questionable things that the Chandra did, uh, but uh, I enjoyed that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, other things that I enjoyed uh, was that <laughs> Vin and uh, Lord Elland are finally married uh, and they're no longer uh, teenage love and you know, insecure about how they enjoy each other. That was, okay, that was probably one of the less, least enjoyed parts of the book for me. I remember you mentioning was that the romance. in uh, Mistborn as yeah, well. And it you was did, you weren't just a fan. kind of, man, get on with it. Just tell each other how you really feel. Don't go around and um, they just weren't honest with each other. They were just assuming a lot about the other person. Um, but it wasn't until they were direct and then there was movement in the relationship, and I enjoyed that. It's like, oh, finally. Um, so yeah, and it was, it was after that point, the relationship actually made a lot more sense to me. Uh, and it's like, okay, this does make sense. They do love each other. It's clear. It's apparent now. Um, so that was a good sort of relief moment for me. So you're over the Vin and Ellen, the awkward years. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad those are behind us now. <laughs> hmm. There were so many good reveals. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm blanking on a few of them. Let's see what else. Um, oh, <laughs> Ellen discovering that he now has some uh, elementic powers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the very end of the book. That was a huge reveal. Um, yeah, what would you think of the whole uh, cliffhanger at the end? <laughs> you got to read the third book. I mean, you just have to, right? Um, have you started the third book? No, I've been waiting for this interview so that I can start it. Because now you can start I'm going to forget uh, <laughs> what happened in this book once I start reading the other one. And things are going to start blurring themselves together. Uh, so I, I've waited to start it. And uh, yes, I do plan on continuing with the series. Woo! Yeah. Um, so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of touched on this a little bit, maybe, but do you have any new favorite characters or any least favorite characters? So how yes. about new favorite characters mm. first? Uh, I forgot what happened to Tensoon. Did he stick around? Uh, or I think he has to go back because now his contract is yeah, he over. Oh, the, yes, he has to yes. go back to the Chandra people. Mm -hmm. But I, I really enjoyed his character. Mm -hmm, um, for sure. Oh my gosh. Sazed. What a brilliant character. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, He's a some, some of the best writing was in the development of his character. And there, um, just, there are so many layers to this man. Um, things about him even questioning his own calling. Uh, you get to see him struggle with that um, as he's... And also discovering the kind of things that he did uh, in order to help. Uh, with the siege, which is really looked down upon by his kind, and uh, this character of Tindwell, um, mm -hmm. like bringing all of these issues up in in front of him, so the reader gets to dis to find out that uh, Sazed is not a typical keeper. So I did enjoy that quite a bit, and um, you also get to see him ponder a lot on his journey to go back to Luthadel. Um, so he was one of the first few people that got to see the mists uh, at work. And yeah. That was one of my favorite parts, mm -hmm. actually, of that second book was him walking in the village. Yeah, it was great. It was very creepy. It it's was. It's one of the creepiest yeah. parts. Well, very well done. Um, okay, so any least favorite characters or anyone who you could do without or didn't, or didn't like? I don't know. Who? You may not have anyone, but we'll see. <laughs> least favorite characters? Yeah. Um... I it's okay if you like don't have any. Least, the, okay, so uh, what was the name of uh, Lord Set's daughter? She was a little annoying. Oh. Uh, but I think she was purposely that, written that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's she's supposed to be like on the surface, mm -hmm. kind of this frilly. That was a cool little reveal, too, that girl. she was actually an, uh, uh, an alamancer. 
Hang on, we have to figure out what's her name. Uh, is it Colette? 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 Was it? Alrian. Alrian, that's right. Alrian is the character. Yeah. And she's Colette. quite. Yeah, I, just, I don't know. <laughs> Where did you get Colette? I just made up a, n- a name in my mind. It's okay. Like, I didn't remember her either. Arian. Arian, and that was cool too. How um, she was even able to manipulate the master of manipulators, Breeze. So. Yeah, yeah. That was that was cool. I enjoyed her for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I would like to know: Did you make any predictions before reading Well of Ascension? That ended up coming true. Yes, I did. And they did come true. So the predictions that I had after reading the first book was... um, I was hoping to see in this book what the outcome would be if you were able to live out the the idea of having an idealistic um, ruling. So being able to have someone who is inherently good and wants good to happen. uh, What would be the result of leading a kingdom. So we we got that actually through Lord Elland mm-hmm. trying to rule Luthadel as best as he could with good intentions and seeing that it failed terribly. You also saw that through his friend Jastis, who tried to do the exact same thing in another kingdom, and it also didn't work. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I had thought that after reading the first book, I was wondering, is... Uh, is the author trying to have us think about is evil necessary to have to to maintain balance in uh, the world? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say that maybe Brandon Sanderson thinks that, but I'm just saying that is a theme that is uh, discussed in the book, and it is brought up in a very interesting way. That you do have to wonder, um, people. So, particularly saw this when Lord Elland was dethroned. And he saw that there were Ska who were dying of uh, freezing to death. And when, and he was thinking, at least under the Lord Ruler, they were all taken care of because the Lord Ruler needed Ska workers. So they would have not frozen to death. They had plenty to eat. And under his failed attempt at running the kingdom, there were people, um, there were people who were freezing to death. There were people who didn't have enough to eat Mm -hmm. and he had three armies at his doorstep so yeah kind of yeah some some things got worse that's so that's exactly what i had anticipated would happen in this book and that was the entirety of the story was was basically on that hey things got worse yeah Yeah. and not just in luthadel but also in that other kingdom where justice was ruling and the coloss uh actually he's oh man it was what a mess right so yeah huge mess yeah so what are the strengths and weaknesses of the second book do you think okay so halfway through the book and this is why it took me so long to read this because there was not a whole lot of movement um there was nothing really exciting happening that um like sometimes when you watch a movie and it's just like shoving popcorn in your mouth, summer blockbuster, you know, action, Peter Jackson kind of stuff. And you're just like, oh, I got, I got to find out what happens, right? Uh, that didn't come until the latter half of the book. Actually, maybe even more like the last third of the book. So that's why it took me a long time to get through it was because there was nothing really motivating me to... There were no cliffhangers, really. And there wasn't anything that was uh, kind of revealed sooner in the first book things were mentioned and almost immediately they were revealed it's like mm-hmm. oh you saw Kelsier move with such finesse huge uh speed and you're like what is going on and then you find out in the next few chapters oh he's using alamancy this is how it works these are where the metals do and you're like oh okay awesome and then you discover that vin has the same power and she was able to so there's a lot that's thrown out to keep you interested to keep reading um, chapter after chapter in the first book that did not happen in this one. And it was, it was kind of a chore. So I did mention that I like Brandon Sanderson's writing, but it was kind of a chore to read through and pick it up and know, oh my gosh, I still have 600 pages to go. Um, and I didn't really know when it was going to pick up and it didn't happen until halfway through the book. 
Yeah, so you you felt a little unmotivated to keep reading. Yeah, um, but the second part of the book, um, I read it really quickly. Like, mm-hmm. in a matter of a week, I finished it. Yeah, you were... Once I got there. Yeah, you actually wanted to read. You're like, I'm going to get home and read today. And I was like, who are you? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so if if there would have been a few more reveals thrown in, uh, a, a few more breadcrumbs, right? Just, like, keep reading it to find out more other than just like this long drama of them wondering who's the um infiltrator wondering what is this huge mystery that's written in the rubbings that uh Tindwell and Sazed are looking through it's just a lot of like research and sitting through their research uh it wasn't very exciting okay yeah i'll give that to you <laughs> i i enjoyed the build up of the second book, but it's a common complaint that the second book takes a while to get going. And I can mm-hmm. see that for sure. Especially because it was done so well in the first book. And it wasn't like the first book was just like, oh, action packed all the time. There were some, uh, some things that were slowly built up, but there were still reveals. And I think that this one had less. So that was a weakness. Do you have, I think so. Do you yeah. have a strength? You want to out there? <laughs> the reveals. The reveals. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it had been built up for so much that you discover these things at the end of the book and, you're, and it was awesome. I, one of the biggest reveals that I enjoyed was uh, seeing that uh, Lord Elland actually did change quite a bit. Um, he changes a lot. He even takes the life of his friend, one point friend, Justice. Because he was so angered by his um, his foolishness of bringing an army to his doorstep and they killed so many people. So he was angered and had, it was a righteous killing, you know? Um, he would have never done that in the last book or even at the beginning of this book. So he did change quite a bit. Yeah. So he's starting to understand what it takes to be a king. Yeah. For sure. Do you have any predictions for the third book or anything you hope to see happen or what do you think is going to happen next? Well, I definitely (laughs) want to know what the heck is the darkness? Like, you know, there's a lot of things that have been thrown out, such as the mists, which many people thought it was. But now you're wondering, maybe it's not that. Maybe it might be this figure that appeared that um, that then released into the world. And there have been, so in the research that Sazed was doing, um, traditionally it's been thought that the darkness is a creature or someone who has enormous amount of power. That's kind of what you see at the end. Uh, Vin releases this thing into the world. And I also want to know how the, um, how the ministry is involved in this. So the, um, Inquisitors? the Inquisitors, yes. And also... What the heck, Marsh? Like, where have you been all this book? He just shows up at the very end. And for the first time, you get to see a little bit of his own perspective, which was really neat. And, oh, man, I I really want to find out more about Marsh. I wanted to find out more about the Inquisitors and what they've been planning. Who changed the the scriptures, Mm -hmm. I guess you could call them. And... um, and what is this thing like that Vin has revealed? Also, Ellen, is he, is he misborn? Like we don't know. Is he? Uh, I, I mean, we're we're led to assume that he probably is because he can feel other metals. Uh, uh, so yeah, I don't know. That's gonna be pretty awesome. Um, I, I definitely look forward to that. To seeing Ellen discover his new power, to see how his character is developed into being a, a real king. And I think there's going to be some kind of like the anticipation of when I was waiting to, so I didn't, oh man, I feel embarrassed. I, I've never read the Lord of the Rings. It's okay, but uh, you've watched, <laughs> it's okay. But I've seen the movie okay. so many times. Yeah, you've watched um, the movies enough that y- you're yeah, forgiven. <laughs> and Return of the King, oh my goodness, what an amazing film. It's just like. Hey, the king has arrived, and I, I hope to see that in the third book. Just a good closure to someone who is um, well-educated, well-experienced, and uh, by heart wanting to be someone who does good in the world. 
I'm hoping that Ellen fills that out. Um, but we'll see. Would you like to give us your final rating for Well of Ascension? Ooh. Ah. Um, I've gone back and forth between this rating. Um, sometimes I thought maybe just a four because of that two thirds of the book where nothing really advanced. Um, that's okay. But, you know, now that I'm thinking about all the reveals and the character study that I, I, all of this was necessary. Um, I think in order to build even for that third book, um, you needed to have a lot of background and Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon is Brandon Sanderson is building a world. So that takes a lot of work. So I'm going to be a little bit nicer. I'm going to give it a four and a half. Um, because the first book was a five and it was enjoyed cover to cover. This one, there were a few parts where I'm like, Ooh, I really have to push myself to pick it up. So four Mm -hmm. and four and a half. That's the best I can do. Final offer. (laughs) Sold. Yeah. (laughs) 4.5 stars. Using, Using the half stars. Well, that is everything that I was going to ask you. Do you have anything you want to add or anything that <clears throat> we didn't talk about that you wanted to talk about? Yeah, so some people want to know if reading the Mistborn trilogy has um, whet my appetite for reading <laughs> all of those. Oh, 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 look, how, look how big these are. Oh my gosh. They're bigger than my head. <laughs> Um, if they, if a lot of these are like the first two thirds of that book, I would be less motivated to pick them up. And from what I've heard is that they kind of are. I have to really, really like this, okay, this third book of the trilogy. Yeah. And I think that I would make up my mind about whether I'm going to go into the Stormlight Archives, um, after I'm done with the trilogy. Okay. If, that's fair. So yeah, I'm waiting to find out if I will start that beast of a saga oh man i think what i what i say is the if you like the payoffs of mistborn i did the payoffs of stormlight are like even cooler that's what i hear so and you did mention there is that these are some of the best books that you've ever read i mean that that carries a lot of weight you read a lot of stuff i like them yeah, more you than, guys know i like them more than miss <laughs> i like them more than mistborn yeah see there you go the Stormlight Archives, you've heard it there. She likes them better than Mistborn. I, I believe her. Now we just have to see if, uh, if I'm you, willing yeah, to... If you like the Hero of Ages... To push through, yeah. And you want more. The slow, the slow burn. Mm-hmm. A thousand pages. Oh, man. <laughs> After I'm interviewed about my thoughts on the third book, then I'll reveal whether I'll start the Stormlight Archives. All right, so maybe in a year we'll be reviewing the third book. <laughs> maybe. No, well, we have a summer coming up. I can yeah. read then. <laughs> Hopefully you can read it in the summer. All right. Well, thank you, Julio, for letting me grill you today. And uh, let us know in the comments if you have anything to add to Julio's thoughts. And if you do write a comment with spoilers, um, try and just do a little warning and then click enter a few times so that um, you're not spoiling anyone accidentally, but please leave some comments down below for Julio, letting him know how you liked this review. And I really appreciate you guys watching today. Thank you for hanging out with us for a little bit. All of my social media links are in the description down below, and uh, hopefully we can have Julio back for another video soon. I'll be here. <laughs> he lives here, so he has to be here. Yeah, she knows where I live. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you all. And keep reading great books. And until next time, bye-bye.